Very quickly, before this video starts, I would like to warn you that the topics, footage, and music I'm about to show you are very dark, twisted, and kind of terrifying, as is the game I will be discussing. If you are a young child or are uncomfortable with things like death, corpses, feeling unsafe in your own skin, and the overall weight and severity your actions carry in everyday life, as well as in extreme situations with heavy and tragic consequences, then I suggest you don't watch this video. You will not be the same after this. It gets pretty disturbing. So I recently played through a game called Corpse Party Blood Covered, a kind of adventure horror game that was originally made with the RPG Maker software in 1996 and remade for sale on the Steam store, which I will link to down below. It's a fantastic experience that you really need to play through with the lights off to get the full effect. And after witnessing the five chapters it contains and watching the anime adaptation, I find myself questioning its themes and what it has to say about life. It reminded me of Doki Doki Literature Club in the way that what it has to say directly affected me as a person and touched me in some very sensitive areas that I thought a game could never touch. And no, it wasn't in the teary touchy feelsy kind of way. My whole view of the world changed. I grew a kind of deeper understanding about some of life's greatest challenges as well as its greatest rewards. And that's what I want to talk about here. Why this game, as a cinematic experience, just works. To briefly touch upon the absurdity that is this game's premise, a group of eight school kids and their teacher perform a charm called Sachigo Ever After that will ensure they stay friends forever, only to be transported to another dimension. This other dimension takes the form of the old elementary school that stood before their high school, Heavenly Host, but was torn down after a group of children were kidnapped and murdered. But they are separated into small groups, as the spirits of the murdered children have formed the school into a nexus of closed spaces that all took the form of Heavenly Host. And when they die in these spaces, their souls are trapped in the school and they will feel the exact pain they felt at the time of death for all eternity. In this realm, death is absolute and no one can escape from it, so they have to fight to all end up in the same closed space so they can at least have the dignity of dying next to their loved ones. Holy crap, that's quite the premise! It's one that's so interesting and unique that opens up a million possibilities in terms of storytelling, characters, and events. With something so crazy and out of the ordinary, the sky isn't even the limit. The limit is existence itself! So in discussing what it does that's so great that it changed my worldview forever, we will be looking at three things. The characters and how they're treated, the evolution of the story, and the overall presentation of the world. This will be very fast paced, so let's jump into it right now! First off, how the characters are treated. This game is very willing to murder everyone in at least one of the many wrong endings. In fact, it's so murder happy that sometimes even when you do get the right ending, it's nearly impossible to tell that you did as the events play out. You just gotta hope for the best, which is exactly what this game wants. You should not treat Corpse Party as a game, but instead as life or death. Your actions will either save their lives or send them to their graves in the most brutal ways possible. When a girl jumps into a contaminated pool to drown herself, you can either try to find the spot she landed in and dive in to save her life, or drain the pool of its water and come back to find her corpse. Halfway stuck in the drain pipe. Absolutely mutilated. And there's no one to blame but yourself. Her spirit isn't going anywhere. She's gonna stay like that and suffer that pain until the end of time. Or maybe you'll slice her in half with a random wire in the hallway because she ran off on her own and you didn't chase her. And then get cut in half yourself. Or maybe you'll get in a fight with your best friend after you almost get murdered and you next find her in the bathroom hanging from a noose. And you can't save her in time. That is the real ending of a chapter. What the hell even is this game after something like that? Okay, let's just move on to the second point of discussion today. How the story develops and shows the progression of Heavenly Host turning into the living hellscape it is today. I told you this video gets disturbing. So here's the deal with this one. I'll keep it as spoiler free as possible with one glaring exception, even though I don't think anything in this video counts as a spoiler. I already told you about how every character dies in at least one ending, so who really cares about spoilers anymore? Regardless, until chapter 5, all you really know about Heavenly House is that it's a messed up place that exists because of the pain and suffering of dead kids, right? But as you move forward in the chapter, you learn that the kids were tortured mercilessly until they died, the real reasons why the school had to be closed and torn down in the first place, and the biggest truth bomb of all, hold on. I'm about to spoil the true background of Sachiko, and it's not something that can be properly appreciated unless you play the rest of the game. If you aren't fine with spoilers, skip ahead to the time cone shown on screen now. Three, two, one. That Sachiko is a spirit, but also not? 
She's a physical manifestation of her spirit, which held so much hatred after being killed alongside her mother when she was just 7 years old. All she wants is to send children to her mother, the school nurse, and make her happy again. But it isn't making her happy, and this drives them both mad. End of spoiler. After learning something like that, after learning the truth behind why this realm exists, it's clear that the writers knew exactly what response they could generate from you. They wanted you to grow to genuinely feel sorry for these children. They aren't the ones to blame for this cursed existence, their killers are. And now it's your job to help them finally rest in peace. And lastly, the presentation of all them meaty bits. For being mainly pixelated, these are some of the creepiest graphics I have ever put down money to see. Just by the look of the school, you never can feel safe. Something will always pop out and end your run, and it will always have the possibility to. Each time you pass by a desecrated corpse, you truly feel the suffering they must have been through in their brief life, the Heavenly Host. What did they look like when they were alive? It doesn't matter, because soon you will be looking like that too. How do they even die? Don't worry, you can pick up their ID badge so you can look at exactly how they died. That's pretty damn creepy. Oh, and the soundtrack? Oh, the soundtrack. Every piece of music gives you a different emotion that resonates strongly with what's currently happening or what's about to happen. And there's a wide variety of pieces. Chapter 1's theme makes you want to figure out exactly what's happening as quickly as possible, while the grim reality of where you now reside starts to sink in. The music in the aforementioned girl is drowning scene makes you feel like, oh shit, there's been a mistake and now someone's dying from it, what the everlasting f do I do now? And then, there's my favorite piece in the entire game, which plays in the abandoned bomb shelter underneath the school, because this is Japan, walking through shelves of collected human skulls, past random trap holes, and in a room where humans are butchered like cattle, on your way to face Sachiko herself. Just listen. This music was what finally broke me in my playthrough. It's equal parts tragic and terrifying. You're nearing the final challenge, the being that brought you to this realm in the first place. A realm built on tragedy and loss. A place populated by vengeful spirits that only wants to be put to rest after so many years of torment and suffering. And it's all about to come to pass for you and your friends. The do or die moment. You've lost so many to the horrors of this school, and you could potentially lose everything. It's a powerful piece of music with a powerful message. Act, or this will have all been for nothing. You've endured so much for so long, and now it's time to finish it. And on that note, I believe I should do the same thing and end this video right here. Have I gotten you interested in picking up Corpse Party Blood Cover for yourself? Well then head on over to the Steam store and pick it up, I've linked it in the description down below. Do you feel like watching something a bit less scary uh, before you have nightmares at night? Well, go ahead and hit me right in the face to watch me talk about Dragon Ball Super. If you like this type of content, consider dropping a like. And if you really like to hear me ramble on more about stuff, consider subscribing. Your viewership means a whole lot more to me, and I cannot thank you enough. So until next time, hold on. I'll see you later!